this is Rom Wills coming back at you with yet another video in search of good pussy now I know y'all seen that title and once again y'all wondering has Rom got into the moonshine again nah if you as you can tell by the thumbnail it's actually the title of a book in search of good pussy living without love the real truth about men and their relationships. Reflections of a reformed ladies man. Just telling it like it is. By Don Spears. As an aside. That gotta be the longest damn title and subtitle of a book I've ever seen. Man. But um. Yeah I'm doing a review of In Search of Good Pussy. And yes that's the title. And believe it or not. Even though it's uh heavily centered on relationships the term good pussy as he use it is more a metaphor in fact let me read what this brother said about it hold on you know let me turn to the good book and y'all know why I'll call this a good book in a few hold on let me find that page yeah I mean, he starts off talking about what is good pussy. He says, good pussy is whatever absolutely makes your day. It is that feeling or that thing that which gives you undeniable euphoria and brings true rapture. Just think of the best thing that has ever happened to you. That was good pussy. But again, you really did not know how to associate it with anything else in your life. It was just a feeling. Good pussy is that which gives you the richest, most heart-throbbing, tear-teasing fulfillment imaginable. It is the stuff dreams are made of, not just any dream, but your very own inner most personal dream. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting about this book. It's, as he uh, said in uh, his very long title, it's the reflections of a reformed ladies man. Now, this wasn't like one of these academic cats even though he was a teacher um, who you know wrote some book or some comedian this was an actual player I mean in fact a better term might be playboy because this dude has some affluence you know from his own admission he came from a more upper class background living down there in New Orleans and you know probably a bougie motherfucker but he's cool as shit though cool as shit I met the brother one time thorough real thorough and understand one of the things that really got me is that this brother was talking about stuff in 91 when this book was published that we're still discussing today we're still going over you know there's a lot of stuff said about all the books that were uh, geared towards women back in the day and the media that really supported whatever views that women have and this brother he really put his stuff out there now he didn't have a major publisher you know back then it was a bit hard he had to push it himself but he influenced so many people like uh, many people have heard of uh, radio personality Michael Bayston and know about the books he's read I remember a copy of uh, Michael Basin's first book where he referenced he referenced Don Spears. I mean, Don Spears he he's really he's kind of like that legend from uh whom all lovers have come. He really is. He really is because a lot of people who really really just read anything relationship wise from men will know about him, especially older cats. And one thing I wanted to do was put his name out there in the present day. That was one thing, but also to show these issues that we're having in relationships now, it's nothing new. It really isn't. They were the same issues back then. And there's an actually another book I can, um, I'll probably do a, a book review one that was published in 86. And this was by two white clinical psychologists and that's one of the most underlined books that I have. And I'll talk about that in a future video. And it was talking about the same things we're talking about now. Even though it, it was applied to the greater community. But, In Search of Good Pussy, very good book. In fact, the, not only will I do a review 
on this video, but the next two videos afterwards will be based on something that I've read in um, in search of good pussy. I mean, it was two subjects that you know weren't their own videos. Now he talked about. I mean, this book it is so much. I mean, it's it's so much. In fact, uh, my video incompatibility and unrealistic expectations actually was inspired by a chapter that uh, he had in this book it was inspired that's how influential this brother was and as I said he, he talked about uh, he talked about a lot of things let me uh, let me find some other excerpts for y'all to read I mean it is some of the stuff we talking about now I mean like he even mentioned simps but he didn't use the term he used milk toast man that's I mean that's how deep it was but check out what he said it was one chapter he had it was called riding fine dressing fine and talking fine he wrote if you are a black man in America and not riding fine dressing fine and talking fine with lots of money in your pockets you can hang it up the fat lady will never sing for you anyway Many black women think these material things tell them who you are. So without them knowing, you are obviously, without them, so without them, you are obviously nobody, or at least nobody worth knowing. It's almost axiomatic. If you do not look like a winner, you must be a loser. Because as everyone knows, anyone who is successful wants everybody else to know it. This just shows how shallow many people are, however, because anybody can buy clothes and take on an expensive car note. That doesn't mean they are about anything, and some of the most well-spoken men I know are the biggest bullshitters I know. They are good p pussy pros. Now, one of the things, this brother, he really comes from his own experience. And he tells you straight up in the book, he's probably experienced more things than you have. He'll tell you straight up. I mean, he has no problem. He, he has no problem telling you telling you that um, that he's experienced a lot. He's seen a lot. He's talked to a lot of people, and anybody who's really been out there a little bit, they can read. They you know they can read through the book and say, okay, this brother obviously knows what's up. You know, this brother obviously knows what's going on. Now. I want to read another verse from a verse. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, I am calling this the good book, <laughs> but it is it is a, one of the, my most underlined books. But in another uh, excerpt, in that same chapter about uh, you know riding fine, he he dropped this in here, right? As he stepped from his brand new. 751 BMW. His white teeth glistened as he spoke with the smooth savvy of a romance balladeer. His Hugo Ball suit was 100% worsted wool, and his Giorgio Armani tie was nothing but the finest silk. His gray bally boots glistened under the noonday sun almost as much as his 18 karat Cartier chains and the two karat diamond rings he wore on three fingers of each hand as finely as finely dressed women eagerly approached him swooning with adoration and grabbing his hand as they awaited his instructions yes that was reverend smith who like many other ministers is wrecking black relationships by holding black women captive turning them against their men and alienating the men i mean this dude i mean this dude goes in that one thing about this book he, he didn't hold back. He didn't hold back. I mean, he, 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 he addressed everything. I mean, he even addressed homosexuality, lesbianism. Uh, he, he really, he really got into it. He really got into that thing called game. And excuse me, I got distracted there for a second. I had to adjust something. But uh, I mean, I mean, this 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 was no joke. I mean, and there was even another another 
page he talked about. Uh, let me find that joint again. Yeah, because he talked about he talked about even women cheating. You know, let me read this thing right. He said, "Let me tell you another true little another little true story." There was once a bus driver, Sam, who loved his wife very much. He was also a good provider. Sam and his family lived in a nice house in a clean community and enjoyed many of the comforts of life. He worked He worked while she was a homemaker. Well, one day, Sam left for work as usual, but became ill and had to go home early. Remember, this is a real person living in the real world. When he opened the door to their home, his home, the one he was working hard every day to pay for on the living room sofa in his own home was a gut-wrenching sight. He found another man lying on his couch, butt naked, in the prone position, with his wife also naked as a jaybird, kneeling beside the stranger, with seven inches of the other man's penis jammed in her mouth and semen dripping from her lips. Damn. And that was in a chapter when he talked about is violence ever justifiable? Because you know, dude, with the ass. And, you know, I know some people would say, oh, he shouldn't have did that, he should have did this, that. No, uh, one of the things about In Search of Good Pussy, I mean, when this brother talked about some real stuff, uh, just some real happenings, and, that, and he wasn't politically correct. And... I would just say in general, check out the book. I got the link in the description box. And like I said, in doing this, I was originally just going to do uh, just one video on it. But as I was going through, I was seeing some stuff and I was like, damn, damn, yeah, that brother was talking about that back in the day. Because he's going to make you think. He's one of those, you're going to read some stuff and you're going to be like, damn, that shit happened to me too. And it's ironic like I said he wrote if anyone who remembers the early 90s it was hard to find anything that was affirming men because one of his main thing was just saying hey you know what men out here really just looking for just love you know just basic love and he said it was actually happening in place of that love and I mean he gets political and everything I mean when I when I when I met the brother, and I actually met him when I was doing a book signing, um, you know, our discussion wasn't even about relationships. It was more political. So, you know, read this. I mean, he's dropping some history on you, dropping some perspective. Check out this book. And as I said, I got, uh, there were a couple things in the book that was something that, some stuff that really needs to be, uh, looked at today I mean because it's still happening it's a dynamic and it shows that if in 2017 we're still going over the issues and the problems that were in existence in 1991 nothing has changed you know there's been some videos recently where myself and the master teacher BGS you know, we were dropping some knowledge about, you know, how things were in the day. And I'm quite sure some other brothers have as well. And one of the issues is that you have a lot of young people. They were like, well, I, I wasn't old enough then or, you know, they ain't have anything to do with me. Um, well, whether or not it did or not, history, history really does go in a spiral, as uh, BGS would say. Um you know, stuff that's happened before will happen again. And sometimes if you had people who went through that experience before, they can tell you, hey, you know, this is what happened. This is how we need to change it. This is how you can break the cycle. And, you know, as I was going through the book, I was just like, damn, you know, why are we still discussing this? And this was, you can't place this on some uh, videos on YouTube. As some women like to do, they try to act like, you know, brothers were like concerned about just start now being concerned about some stuff. It was like, no, baby, no. This was stuff going back to 91. And, it, and to be honest, I'm willing to bet there might be 
some book, uh, some paper, some academic paper, some people who could probably look at everything going on now and say, you know what, I started seeing this stuff or I saw the same stuff back in the 70s. And you can probably always find somebody say, well, we saw it. It was just now we just have better media and we can't hide sweep stuff under the rug like we used to. But anyway, that that's a whole other conversation. So definitely, definitely check out uh, this book. All right. Anyway, and as I said, uh, next couple of videos, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna hit y'all with some stuff from the videos just to make y'all think. Anyway, thanks for listening. Talk to you later. Peace.